Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk about batteries and generators. This lecture is um, part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. Uh, by the way, on the same side there is a prerequisite course which is called Math for Teens. Now, we are talking about electricity right now, so this is just part of this part of the part of the part um, uh, of the whole course which is dedicated to electricity and magnetism. Um, if you found this lecture somewhere on YouTube uh, on some other uh, source of information, uh, I do suggest you to rather watch it from the unizor.com because every lecture on the website has a detailed notes for this lecture is like a textbook basically um, plus all the lectures are presented in certain logical order so I do recommend you to take the course and in particular the course contains many problems which I'm solving uh, and some problems are given as exams which you can take and uh, the site is completely free there are no advertisements so no financial strings attached all right let's go to the batteries um, I would like to start with analogy. Um, everything in physics is really understood much better if you make some kind of a meaningful analogy. So analogy which I'm trying to use when talking about batteries and generators, basically the generators of electric energy. Um, the analogy is um, the heater or the boiler whatever and, uh, and the radiator when you are heating the room. So what actually happens is, so this is something which is the source of heat, let's call it a boiler or something. Now the hot water is generated by this boiler and it goes to the house to a radiator. This is the radiator. Now there the hot water gives away its heat basically heating the room and the cold water goes back into the boiler and this is the flame and it heats again the water and the water circulates so this generates energy and this consumes the energy now very very similar process is happening when you have an electric circuit. So let's say you have electric circuit which has the battery this is the battery and a resistor now what happens here? basically exactly the same thing the battery somehow, we are not talking about how, but somehow generates electricity which means what it means it separates certain electrons from the corresponding nuclei and sends electrons to a negative terminal and the um, positively charged um, atoms which have lost certain number of electrons are accumulated on another terminal so this is the excess of electrons this is the deficiency of electrons in atoms. Now, what happens then? Basically, it generates potential energy. Now, why? Because, obviously, um, negative and positive charges, the atoms uh, which, which have plenty of electrons and some free electrons on one side, and the atoms which have a deficiency of electrons on another side, electrons are gravitating or attracted um, towards the uh, positive terminal because it has the lack of it, it, it has lack of, lack of electrons. Now, but the battery doesn't let them to connect together. It separates them. That's the purpose of the battery. So it keeps them apart. Uh, in as much as, for instance, I took something like a stone from the ground and lifted it up. I gave potential energy. I don't let that stone go down. 
Now, if there is a circuit, then we are allowing electrons actually to connect to these atoms which lack electrons, which have deficiency of electrons, but not through internal uh, connection within the battery. No, battery separates them, that's the purpose, but through the other way. And electrons don't have any other choice but to go this way to basically connect with those atoms they were separated from. And meanwhile, as they are moving, they are actually converging the potential energy which the battery has created into kinetic energy of electrons. Now they are going through this wiring in the same way as the hot water goes through the pipe. Then it hits the resistor and the hot water goes into radiator where it actually gives away the heat and what electrons do with the kinetic energy which they have well they are trying to drag through this resistor basically resistor is resisting so the part of the kinetic energy is wasted uh, and resistor probably is heated but we'll talk about this separately and then on another end it goes back here great but battery continues working so again it separates them and forces the electrons go and that's how the whole circuit is working all the time so electrons are separated here through some kind of whatever the mechanism of battery is for instance if it's a car battery then it's some kind of a chemical energy which is contained and this chemical energy because of this chemical reaction results in separation whatever the source is there are many different ways to produce electricity to separate electrons from the atoms but anyway battery is functioning and then it goes all around all around so that's basically how the mechanism of uh, generating energy electric energy and consuming is happening now my next topic is what happens if we are using multiple batteries basically there are two major ways of connecting batteries in a series and in a parallel now what happens first in a series well in a series you have two batteries connected like this so the negative terminal of one is connected to positive terminal of another and then the negative uh, part of this is connected through all this uh, I'm sorry this is positive this is negative and this is negative So what happens here? Again, let me use the analogy with the heater. What happens if we connect two heaters one after another? This is also a heater. Well, the water, the cold water which is coming here, is being heated up to certain temperature but then it goes to the heater again which means the temperature will rise even further and then it goes out now the speed of the water actually is exactly the same we don't change the speed but we do change the temperature now what happens in this particular case well this battery separates um, electrons which are accumulated on this terminal from the atoms which lack electrons on this one now so this is the terminal with excess of electrons now it goes to this and what happens here with these electrons well this battery separates its own electrons from its own atoms plus there are some other electrons which are coming here so they're pushed also towards it's like heat this um, heating 
uh, mechanism actually is, trans is uh, um, transmitting the, the hot water even to a higher temperature. And this particular battery, it already has a certain number of electrons and it adds its own. So these electrons are going through this particular uh, terminal of the battery and goes here. So both electrons from here and electrons for here are accumulated here. So we have more electrons, so to speak. So the result is that more electrons are accumulated on this side than if you have only one battery. So two batteries produce more electrons um, and at the same at, at the same time. And what happens with these electrons? Well, since you have already separated certain atoms and you're separated even further, you have a greater difference in electric potential on these two poles. So when you are connecting uh, batteries in series, you are basically adding the potential which is created by one battery to potential which is created by another battery. So the difference in potentials becomes greater. That's the voltage. So the voltage is added. So this is the voltage of one battery, this is the voltage of another battery, and they are added together. So on these uh, terminals, you have the sum of two voltages. That's exactly what happens when you have some kind of a toy which has, okay, insert six batteries. Now how are they inserted? Usually, the battery, if you look at this, it has two poles, one and another. And whenever you are uh, inserting them, you usually insert it this way. And this is connected and this is connected. So you see what happens? This is, it looks parallel, but actually it's a serious connection because you see the positive is connected to negative, negative connected to positive, positive connected to negative, and this is output, and this is the same thing. So they are geometrically parallel, but electrically, from the, from the circuit standpoint, they are connected sequentially. So it's a series. And that's why if you have, let's say, 1.5 voltage, let's say it's a AA battery, you have four batteries, then you have, what, 6 volt as a result. Now, what happens if you are connecting parallel? Well, that's a different story. Parallel connection is this. Oh, actually, I can put it this way. This is the parallel connection of two boilers. So what happens? Well, they are working basically with certain um, in, the, in a certain regime, uh, producing certain amount of heat. But we don't need twice as much heat in a room. So what we are usually doing, we are reducing the flame here and flame here. So they are working longer. They are wasting their uh, whatever the uh, time it's allotted for them to, to, to work before, before they break, we are prolonging this time. They are working in a lower regime producing the same amount of heat, but this one is producing only half of the heat and this one producing is also half of the, half of the heat. 
Now, what happens if we have batteries? Well, with batteries we have again similar story. We have these two batteries connected parallel to each other. So, what happens here? We need a certain amount of electricity here. This is a consumer of electricity. Now, we need a certain amount of energy. But now we have two sources of energy. So what happens here? If this is a battery, and if one battery, for instance, lasts, let's say, an hour, then we need only that amount of energy. So basically, both batteries can last longer. They will work probably two hours together because we are consuming half of the energy from one and half of the energy from another. So if there is a certain amount of chemical energy in the battery, let's say we are not recharging them, just a battery, regular battery. So we are getting this energy. We are getting only half of energy from this battery, half of energy from this battery. So both batteries together will last longer. But the voltage is exactly the same because amount of the, the, the difference in potential is exactly the same whatever this battery develops let's say 1.5 volt if it's a double a battery and this one if we connect positive to positive So all positive are connected to all negative are connected. What happens? We will still get 1.5 volt. However, four batteries will last four times as long, well, approximately, as one battery. They provide the same 1.5 voltage, but again, the amount of energy will be now distributed among four of them. <coughs> so. Basically, that's the most important part of this lecture. What happens if we are connecting batteries parallel or in series? In case of a series, their voltage is added. In case of a parallel, we are not really increasing the voltage, but we are, we are decreasing the amount of energy we are taking from one particular battery because we are spreading this amount of energy among four of them or five of them or whatever, six of them. Um, and so they last longer basically. So that's the most important part which I wanted to talk about today. It's not very important actually from, from the theory but you have to really understand what happens when you are let's say put two batteries into a remote control for the television. You're putting them one and another with different sides. Not, not like this one, uh, the picture before that. Um, okay, that's it. That's it for today. And uh, I do recommend you to read the description, the notes for this lecture, which is presented on unizor.com. Um, and uh, then we will continue for the next lecture. I promise I will have some very interesting problems um, to solve. So certain problems I will solve like a lecture. Um, and certain problems will be uh, presented as an exam to this particular topic. Okay, so good luck. Thank you.